Okay, so when we've been drawing free body diagrams, we've drawn the forces acting through the center of mass, like this point and this point here. But what is the center of mass? So at GCC, you would have been given this definition. Center of mass is the point through which the mass is thought to be concentrated. And this is a useful definition to work with. Okay, so in these examples, we're going to assume the objects have uniform density. So what does that mean? That means that the mass is evenly spread out across the object. So for example, a, a centimeter squared over here is the same as a centimeter squared over here. They have the same mass. Okay, so if I want to find the central mass for each of these, what I would do is I would draw lines of symmetry. Okay, so if I draw a line of symmetry, I know that through the center of the book like this, I know that half of the mass would be on this side and the other half on this side. Okay, then I can draw another line of symmetry. And where those lines of symmetry meet is where the center of mass is going to be. So in this case, the center of mass is going to be right in the middle of the book. And I can repeat this process with other, ob other objects here as well. These are what we call regular objects because they have uh, the lines of symmetry are easy to identify. And sometimes with some objects, of course, if the three dimensional it would be sort of line symmetry, we're really talking about planes of symmetry. So these are what the center of mass of these objects are. So this definition of center mass is useful. However, the definition I will be using is this one. The center of mass is the point through which a single force on the body has no turning effect. For example, when I apply a single force through this ruler here, it's not turning because there's no overall moment, so it's not spinning. Or for example, in this book, when I apply a single force through this book, it doesn't turn. Well, now why is that? Why is that the center of mass is obviously here in this case? It's because if I didn't apply the force through the center mass, you can see here, the way it acts through the center mass is going to cause it to spin that way. And this one is causing it to spin that way. So overall, this book is going to topple over, it's going to spin, and it's going to fall over. However, if I apply the force through the center mass like this, in which case there won't be any turning effects. The force is cancel and it'll be in equilibrium. Okay, so here's a practical that you can use to find the central mass of irregular shaped objects. As you can see with this object here, this card which has random shapes cut out of it, it's irregular because there's the lines of symmetry aren't obvious. Okay, and there, there might not be any lines of symmetry in fact. Okay, so to do this, we get a clamp stand and you hang objects freely about different points. So freely, meaning that they can spin and they can rotate around those points. So as you can see, there's some kind of uh, pin here that you're hang, hanging it through but that pin isn't holding onto it, it's letting it rotate. And then we use this thing called a plumb line to draw a perfectly vertical line. Okay, so the center of mass is gonna be somewhere along this line. That's where the object will come to rest if it's hang freely. And then as you can see, we've already done it with another point there. And where those lines meet is where the center of mass is. So you can use this link here to see a practical of someone doing this.